tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hi folks, I hope you're fine. Today we'll talk about Bifrost Graph. Ha, oh, you wonder why? <laughs> Bifrost Graph is the most advanced module for dynamic simulations, but not only. But today we'll uh, encounter three kinds of dynamic simulations which uh, have the tag basic. You find them under Windows and Bifrost Graph Editor, and that's what we'll deal with today. I think this interface will change in the next versions of Bifrost Graph and Maya, but uh, for now, and we're in uh, in autumn 2020, we have these three options, and we just don't care about the Bifrost browser and getting started. We just create a graph. And uh, this is a typical procedure here. You just delete the input because the input is going to be geometry for us. Now, um, we need this window now and then. I don't want to dock it anywhere. I just want to keep it here and minimize it for now. Uh, and we create uh, an object, any kind of object will do. I right mouse click, create a spherical harmonics object. And when I go to this tab here, the poly super shape one I can choose a random and that's what it looks like and I just reduce the complexity of the geometry a little bit so I get this kind of blossom whatever and now I will reopen this window here the Bifrost graph editor and from the outliner with the middle mouse button not the left mouse button the middle mouse button button I drag it in here so I have a super shape and an output and now comes the basic thing about this tutorial because we are dealing with basics you press tab somewhere here in the middle and up here you see the recent commands I used but uh, when we want to concentrate on this search field here and we type in basic and you see three entries. One is the basic aero graph, one is the basic combustion graph, and one is the basic particle graph. Let's start with the particles. Uh, you get this graph here. Uh, what does it mean? It has no input, output. I cannot do anything with it. And uh, when you double click here, you see what's inside. And um, this is already pretty complex. This is this tab, by the way. And uh, we don't want to use this. It's not editable, it's just referenced, uh, we don't care. But uh, this gives us the information that there are a few nodes in here. Basically four of them, these four. We go back to this tab here and with the right mouse button we explode this unity here of um, objects. Now we have it editable in our scene, in the Bifrost Graph Editor. Uh, now let's have a brief look here. Um, the source particles wants geometry and we do have geometry here, the mesh of our super shape and we just plug it in here. Now all the, the other uh, things are already plugged in so we just go to the last entry here which is the exit of particles and we plug it in here. And Maya thinks for a second or two and then the connection has been done. Here are options which you can change. Simulate particles is the particle engine which simulates the dynamics of the particles. The source particles shows you how many you want, for example only 50. And uh, whenever you do editing here, uh, Maya needs to think a little bit and uh, we minimize this and now we have a look. And actually we'll hide the super shape and just have a look at the particles. And guess what they do? they fall down. Let's reopen the Bifrost Graph editor. Here we have Collider. This is also in the basic settings here you find that Collider and the connection here is done already but we need geometry in order to collide with our particles. Now when we plug in this here 
uh, it gives a confusion because the super shape uh, emits particles and does it collide with the particles doesn't really make too much sense so we create another object so let's minimize this again and for example a pipe and we find the pipe right mouse click here and here is the pipe actually we just move it a little bit down and we make it slightly bigger and when we go here we can change the radius and maybe the length make it a little bit longer and move it down now uh, this is not a collider yet so the particles just don't care about it as you can see but when we reopen the gra Bifrost Graph Editor, we can now drag the pipe into this scene here. And the mesh is the output, light blue, and it goes into the geometry of the collider. Now Maya thinks a little bit again. When you uh, click on the collider, you see different settings here, which you can uh, change, enable and disable, for example. You can make it start later, not at frame number one. You can change the details if you have uh, collisions which don't look realistic. You can uh, minimize this or raise this value here. And uh, you have other settings here, for example, the uh, bounciness of our particles when they collide with that object. Let's see what they do. And when we hide the pipe, we see that the particles, the, the stream gets thinner right here. I actually unhide the pipe again and rotate it a little bit just like this and one of the amazing things about Bifrost Graph is the speed of simulation. It's amazingly fast. So this is our first basic Bifrost Graph animation. <laughs>
And of course, all these things render nicely in Arnold. They basically look gray unless you feed an Arnold shader into your Bifrost graph. And I did a tutorial about shading of Bifrost graph objects and hide the pipe. And uh, let's delete it again, this new setup. We have our two geometries. And uh, the beauty of the three basic modules is that you have everything set, um, set up ready for you, to, uh, ready to use. So basic. And now we have the arrow. This is the last one I'm going to dem demonstrate to you. And it's the last basic one we have here. And we explode this. And what it does is... Uh, well, if this happens to you, just press the key L for layout and uh, you'll see everything laid out nicely. Uh, here we have uh, the source air. We need the super shape to go in here. We have a collider, so we can plug the pipe in here. And we have a volume to get out as an output. And we put the volume into this open slot here. Now we close our Bifrost Graph Editor, and we see the steam working. And it's totally different from the combustion because it doesn't have that explosive um, feature. So that's what it does with our pipe. If you don't remember what the pipe looks like, I just made it a little bit bigger. This is our pipe. And when we hide it again, this is what we see as a simulation. And with this, I leave you for now. Just start using the really beautiful and performance-wise amazingly fast Bifrost Graph Editor. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.